Konnichiwa, fellow travelers and curious minds. Welcome to Globe Trotters. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of Japanese culture, but with a twist. Instead of telling you what to do, we'll be unraveling the don'ts, those subtle nuances that can make or break your experience in the land of the rising sun. Are you wondering how much you need to tip the waiter? Why is it so silent on the subway that you could cut it with a pair of chopsticks? Ever been there? Or maybe you've stood at a bustling izakaya, staring blankly at the menu, wondering if your order will come with a side of judgment. Well, fear not, my friends. We're here to spill the beans on everything from the mystical chapstick rule to the ancient art of leaving your shoes at the door. Yup, we're talking about the stuff they don't teach you in guidebooks. So grab your sushi roll, slip off those shoes, and get ready to crack the code of Japanese etiquette like a boss. Stick around till the end, cause trust us, you won't want to miss a single nugget of wisdom we're about to drop. But first, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Trust me, you won't want to miss our upcoming videos on hidden gems, mouth-watering street food, and heartwarming encounters with locals. Let's start with something that might surprise you if you're used to a more chatty atmosphere. Picture this, you're on a train in Japan, surrounded by people, yet it's so silent you can hear the hum of the train's engine. This is because in Japan, maintaining silence on public transport is not just a courtesy, it's a cultural norm. It's about respecting the space of others and contributing to a peaceful journey for all. So, save the loud conversations for later and remember, your phone is for scrolling, not for calls. But it's not just about silence. Another key aspect of Japanese etiquette involves queuing. Whether you're waiting to board a train or buying a ticket, orderly lines are a common sight. There's no rush, no pushing, just patience and respect for the process. It may seem like a small thing, but these queues symbolize a sense of order and harmony that's deeply embedded in Japanese culture. Just follow the flow and you'll get to your destination smoothly. Now, let's talk about dining. Japan is renowned for its culinary delights, but there's more to eating than simply savoring flavors. It's a dance of respect, appreciation and tradition. When you step into a restaurant, a warm irasheimas or welcome greets you from the staff. Return the greeting, it's a mutual exchange of goodwill. Once you're seated, a moment of appreciation precedes the first bite. Saying itadakimasu, which roughly translates to I humbly receive, is a way of expressing gratitude for the meal you're about to enjoy. It's a nod to the farmers, chefs, and everyone involved in bringing the food to your table. Now on to chopsticks, those nimble utensils that can be a challenge for the uninitiated. They come with their own set of rules. For instance, passing food directly from your chopsticks to someone else's is a big no-no. It's a custom associated with funerals and is considered inauspicious. Another faux pas is yosabashi, or pulling dishes towards you with your chopsticks. It's seen as a greedy gesture. Instead, use the serving spoons or chopsticks provided. And the biggest chopstick rule, avoid sticking them upright in your bowl of rice. This is another custom linked to funerals, where chopsticks are stuck into a bowl of rice offered to the spirit of the deceased. It resembles a funeral ritual and is considered bad luck. As you explore Japan's vibrant shopping districts, you'll likely encounter many tempting souvenirs and gifts. The aroma of tantalizing street food might lure you in, and the beautifully packaged treats are hard to resist. However, here's where things get a little tricky. In Japan, an unspoken rule of etiquette is not to eat or drink while walking. Yes, you heard it right. The streets, although brimming with enticing snacks, are not the place to indulge your taste buds. This practice is seen as impolite, and it's all about maintaining cleanliness and respect for public spaces. So, what should you do when you've just bought a piping hot takoyaki or a refreshing bubble tea? Simple. Take a pause from your shopping spree. Look for a quiet corner, a bench or a designated eating area nearby. Sit down, relax and savor your snack. Remember, in Japan, even the simplest activities like snacking are infused with a sense of mindfulness and respect. So take a moment to enjoy your snacks in designated areas or while seated. Let's touch on visiting shrines and temples, which are sacred places in Japanese culture. When you step into these serene spaces, you're stepping into centuries of history and tradition. It's like entering a whole new world where time seems to stand still. As you approach the gate, pause for a moment and bow slightly. This simple gesture is a sign of respect 
acknowledging the sanctity of the place you're about to enter. Once inside, you may wish to pray or make an offering. If you do, make sure to do so quietly and respectfully. These sites are not just historical landmarks or tourist spots. They are active places of worship where people come to find peace, pray and reflect. So it's important to maintain a respectful demeanor. And remember, refrain from touching any artifacts or structures unless given permission as they hold significant cultural and religious importance. Before we sign off, we have one more tip for you. Or rather, a tip about tips in Japan? You don't need them. Yes, you heard it right. Japan has a no-tipping culture. Unlike many other places around the world, service staff in Japan are paid a living wage and do not rely on tips to supplement their income. Whether you're dining out, riding a taxi or staying at a hotel, there's no need to leave a tip. In fact, it might even be considered rude in some cases. So how do you show appreciation for good service? A simple, polite thank you is more than enough. This may come as a surprise to many, but it's just one of the cultural nuances that make Japan so unique. It's all about respect and appreciation, not monetary rewards. Remember this tip and you'll blend in like a local. Until next time, sayonara. And there you have it, our top tips for navigating Japan's cultural etiquette. From the peaceful silence of the trains and the orderly queues, to the respectful dining habits and mindful shopping manners. Remembering these will help you blend in and appreciate the beauty of this unique culture. And let's not forget the sacredness of shrines and temples where a bow and quiet reverence go a long way. Thanks for watching and until next time sayonara.